Test. Testing, testing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, your legs. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you today. We we'll greet you in the name of the Lord on this beautiful Palm Sunday. Amen. God bless you here and uh, all those that are that are watching in the virtual church. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ on this uh, beautiful, beautiful Palm Sunday. What a blessing it is to come together. What a blessing to come together. Uh, we're going to go forward and we're going to begin with prayer. Amen. Prayer is necessary. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And uh, do we have any special prayer requests? Any special prayer requests this morning? Anyone have any special prayer requests? Uh, All right. Uh, Sister uh, Drake's daughter. Uh, Sister Drake. Washington. Sister Drake's daughters. Okay. All right. Let's remember them. All right. Let's continue to pray one for another and that the Lord would strengthen and help all the needs that we know of. I've again learned that uh, Jesus' words are right. Men should always pray and not faint. Because there's always so much to pray for. Let's pray for one another. Pray for the service today. That the Lord would speak to someone. Let's pray even for our Sunday school class. Those that are here. Those that are next door with the children. Uh, that the Lord would uh, help in that regard as well. So if you bow your heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, today we say thank you. We say thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for your favor and goodness to us. We bless you for life. For giving us another opportunity, Lord, to come together. We thank you for opening our hearts and our minds to understand your word to understand your word and to live your word, to live it out, God, day by day. We pray for those that are sick and afflicted in their bodies, that you would heal and recover them, that are sick and afflicted in their relationships, in their minds, Lord, that you would recover them as well. We pray in the name of Jesus for every need. We pray for Sister Drake's daughters or for family, others as well, one by one and name by name. And we bless you for the victory, God. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we say amen. amen. And amen. Ah, very good lesson. Sister Joan beat me to the punch. And uh, it is, of course, an extraordinarily good lesson today. See, I added that to it. It's an extraordinarily good lesson today. The lesson today is entitled, The Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. Uh, let's turn to John chapter 10. And uh, we're going to begin uh, there. But we're also going to actually go back a little bit and see there was a connection uh, to last Sunday's lesson. And, uh, and I think as we, as we look into it, I believe that, that it will make some sense to us. The Good Shepherd, the terms that uh, I think all of us, if you've been in church at all or raised in church, you've heard this Good Shepherd terminology a lot. And it is most appropriate, of course, for our Lord and Savior. The, um, the focus verse is John chapter 10 and verse 11. John 10 and 11. You turn there in your Bibles or in your Sunday school lesson, um, and it's on... On the screen as well, John 10 and 11. Let's, uh, let's read it together. When everyone has it, say amen. 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 John 10 and 11. Everybody together. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The truth about God. This is the, uh, the point for us this morning. Jesus gave his life for us. He gave his life for us. And the truth for my life, I will know the good shepherd's voice and follow him alone follow him alone a marvelous point uh for us to go anyone have any uh experience with a sheep anybody here ever ever seen a sheep anybody anybody seeing see what you think about them they look stinky, <laughs> so okay. they look stinky. <laughs> any other impressions Kurt? you said you've seen them yeah, would you? yeah petty yeah. zoo Oh, they sure do. I did, did that this year. By the way, if you've never been to, that's a, a real nativity scene over in Belleville, I guess it is, right? Our Lady of the Snows, they do have a really quite nice uh, Christmas display. Anybody else seen any shepherd? A uh, sheep, rather? Anybody else seen a shepherd? I guess I should ask that next uh, for, for, for on TV, but not, 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 in, not, in, not in plays, but not, not, in real, not in real life. 
yeah, yeah. I've seen sheep too. They're on petting farms in various places. Yeah, they're not the most attractive animal, I guess I would say. Uh, some things about them—they're very helpless in the sense. Domesticated sheep are very helpless. I saw a story. Um, I read a story recently about a sheep that it got away, <laughs> and, and and no one sheared the wool off of it. And when they found him a couple of years later. I, it was a wonder he was even alive. He had like a hundred plus pounds of wool on him. It was like it was. He looked. It was just crazy looking. Uh, so he needed some help. Yeah, we've had some. Uh, we've had some familiarity with with sheep. We don't live in that society where most of us deal with them sheep on a regular basis, but we have seen uh, sheep and have some sense of that relationship between sheep and shepherd. That. Um, that uh, reality of sheep and shepherd is in the New Testament, but it's also in the Old Testament. We have, of course, mo most prominently David, who was a shepherd, of course, as a young man, uh, pinning the, perhaps the, the most famous verse in the Old Testament, what? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He uses that relationship uh, to indicate his relationship with God, who God is for him, one of dependency and protection and provision uh, that is very, very real, was real for him. And many of us today, we recite those same words. Why? Because we know the Lord is, is our shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. We're going to begin uh, this morning, turn in your Bibles, if you will. I want to begin a little bit of a backdrop here with respect to uh, what we have, um, what we have seen. Anybody remember the, <laughs> I should ask this question. Anybody remember the lesson from last week? Sunday school lesson? Uh, we could look right, you can flip right back there and see. Yes, yeah, so you can look right back there. If you recall, we were in John chapter 9, and we were de dealing with the man who was, what, born blind, and the Lord healed him. All, all that whole beautiful, beautiful story of the Lord uh, bringing that man uh, to a place of light uh, in his life naturally, but also light, what, spiritually. The spiritual light is the greater light. It's a light that all of us uh, need to see and to acknowledge. Drop back to chapter 9. And at the end of, the, uh, of that whole narrative, there, there are some words that uh, I think will help us, uh, that I think will help us as we go forward. John chapter 9, and uh, beginning, and let's, let's, um, let's begin at verse 35, because there we have the Lord talking to uh, the man who was healed, and let's see what, uh, what, what happened there. John chapter 9, beginning at verse 35, you have it, say amen. All right, so Lakeisha, you want to read for us? John 9 and 35, go ahead. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Uh -huh. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. All right, so the end of that marvelous, marvelous miracle, we have the Lord bringing him to a place of real uh, understanding and and a profession of his faith. All right. Now, after this word of the Lord to the formerly blind man, now let's see what happens. Verse 39. Go ahead and read it there. For those of you just joining us, uh, we are in John chapter 9. Our lesson this morning is the Good Shepherd. Pick it up at verse 39. Go ahead. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind uh -huh. and some of the pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him are we blind also jesus said unto them if you were blind you should have no sin but now ye say we see therefore your sin remaineth there we have the the the, the culmination uh of of all that transpired with respect to the healing of the blind man uh, jesus brings us to an understanding of what the spiritual truth that those who understand that they are blind that they were able to come to a place of what? Sight. They recognize their need. They recognize their need. That God does and deals with those who recognize their need and express that need to him. God will bring that need and fulfill the need, right? But those who say, I already got it taken care of, guess what? They remain in that same place. They remain in that same place. But look then at the uh, words of the Pharisees we use in Scripture uh, the, uh, I think most of us in sort of our culture and thinking, when we hear the word Pharisees, we, we automatically have a negative uh, connotation, right? If somebody calls you a Pharisee, you know right away that they're calling you something not good, uh, the hypocritical. But taking it back from that sort of connotation that we have, but at that point, the Pharisees were religious leaders in the community. 
and they were people that were devoted to the Lord, right? Then they didn't have necessarily the negative connotations that we have. They were people that knew the law in a tremendous way, right? Remember, Nicodemus came to the Lord at night, John 3. He was a Pharisee. Uh, the apostle uh, Paul was a Pharisee. Uh, that these were men who, uh, whose understanding of the Old Testament far exceeds what we have with the best of our understanding even now. And so th they were looked at with a great deal of honor and a great deal of admiration in that society. That, that's, uh, that's who they were. Um, but with that understanding and greater knowledge uh, that there had come uh, a degree of self Righteousness? Can I use that terminology? I guess there's no other way to put it. There had become a degree of, of self-righteousness. Uh, and uh, <laughs> these are phrases that we hear, cliches, holier than thou and better than thou uh, and an arrogance. Uh, the, so there was some negative things that, that happened as a result of the fact that they thought they knew the Bible better than everybody else. Help me, Holy Ghost, here. Uh, but when they witness this miracle, the words that they ask here in John chapter 9, verse 40, we see an indication of their hearts and their thinking, right? And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, what? Are we blind also? And Jesus, of course, makes a statement, of course, they are blind because they don't think they need help. That's where they are. But then after everybody with us so far. Uh, and so that's the setting, and that's what has transpired. And so immediately after that, Jesus begins where we have in John chapter 10. Understand that the, that the, that the New Testament was written without the chapter breaks. We added those at, at a later point historically so we could understand. But immediately after this incident with the, the blind man and the Pharisees, their statement, and Jesus' response to them, then we have what we have in chapter 9, one of those most marvelous discourses in Scripture that in the book of John, we have these various I am statements where Jesus says, I am. I'm the light of the world. I'm the bread of life. He, although there's seven of them in total. In John 10, we get to one, or you actually get to two of them, I, uh, two of the I am statements. So let's look at it. Uh, in response to uh, just what we heard the Pharisees, now let's keep that in mind as we go to chapter 10. Now let's go forward. Uh, Sister Lakeisha, let's help us there. John chapter 10 and verse 10. I want you to, as we read this, to be thinking about where Jesus is in his statement to the people and to the Pharisees as well. John chapter 10 and verse 1. Go right ahead. Uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now let's stop here. Now he's talking, and who is he talking to, do you remember? He's talking to the Pharisees, right? Now I'm sure there were others that were around, of course, but he's, 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 he's going further, and the audience that was there initially was the Pharisees. And so look at what he says. Now he uses uh, the, the illustration of the sheep and the shepherd. Let's give you a, let's, ourselves a little bit of historical uh, background with respect to this. He says... Truly, when the, well, verily, verily, that's, that is in the Greek, uh, it's a strong, we would say truly, truly. And when he says truly, truly, or verily, verily in scripture, that means wake up, <laughs> pay attention. It means I want you to hear what I'm saying, all right? I mean, uh, uh, if you haven't been paying attention before then, I want you to pay attention now. So whenever we read in scripture, when Jesus says verily, verily, uh, wake up, because what he's saying here, he really wants us to hear it. He says, all right, I say unto you that he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climb up, up some other way, the same is a, a, a thief and uh, a robber. And so he mentions the sheepfold. I asked us earlier today, did any, any of us ever seen a sheep? Of course, many of us in different places, a zoo or a but we've seen a sheep. But a sheepfold, uh, we probably have not seen that. I don't think I've seen that necessarily either. But I think we can well imagine what it is. It, we've all seen the cowboy movies where the cattle are all in this pen or stall, right? 
uh, sort of the similar idea, but the sheepfold was an enclosure uh, that was designed to keep the sheep in a safe place, right? To keep them from wandering out uh, into places of danger, but also to keep dangerous predators and others from coming into the sheepfold. Uh, so that's what it is. Uh, but look at what Jesus says in using this, this idea. He says, he that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is what? And a, a thief and a robber. Uh, that, that a sheep had value, had intrinsic value, right? Of course, for the wool that it produced, but also uh, if you were hungry, anybody like lamb chops? Okay, yeah, so the, the sheep had some value. So there were people that would, would steal sheep. I don't remember uh, 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 all, all we watched cowboy movies, right? You heard of the cattle rustlers. There were people would steal other people's cow or cattle or whatever. That's why they would brand them so that you can prove this is my, this is my cattle, not yours, all right? This is sort of the similar idea that people would steal sheep if they had the opportunity. Uh, he says, someone would climb up over the gate and over the walls of the sheepfold and get in there and they were what? What was their purpose? They were a thief and a robber. All right. Uh, a thief and a robber. A robber is a take it, taking it by force. Uh, you, when you've been robbed, you know you've been robbed. I'm not going to bring up any like, he robbed, I've been robbed. A, a, a thief, sometimes you don't know they took it until when. Later on, like, well, where's my watch at? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stole a thief. <laughs> so, either way, whether you know about it or whether you don't know about it, Jesus covered all of it, a thief and a robber, all right. Uh, and they are stealing what? The sheep. Now, who is the Lord talking about here in terms of this thief and the robber? Any idea? Satan? Okay, go ahead. All right. All right. Sister Wood says Satan. Sister Jones says Satan. All right. Anybody? Any other? Any other Sataners? Uh, I'm just teasing. Anybody else? Any other thought? I, I will give you a bit of a hint. hint. Uh, it's what we were just talking about with respect to the audience uh, that Jesus was directing this to. There. Let's, well, let's, go, let's go on further. Let's go on further and see what, what, what we can gather out of here. Okay? Uh, those of you reading us with us, we're John chapter 10, and now at verse 1, uh, verse tw uh, 2. Go right ahead. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. All right, all right. The thief climbs over and gets in the way, but the shepherd doesn't do that. He does what? He walks right through the door. All right. And we know what a shepherd is. A shepherd is an individual. We've sort of romanticized it, uh, of course, in our culture. But a shepherd, his job, of course, was to what? Watch and protect and provide the sheep. Uh, and it wasn't a passive kind of job. It was an all-inclusive. It was a 24-7 kind of job. You didn't go in for eight hours and then leave. You literally lived with the sheep. I understand that's what it was about. All right. Somebody said the sheep <laughs> were smelly. Who said that? I said, Lakeisha said they stink. All right. The shepherd, he probably pick up some of those same, some of them same uh, odors, perfumes. All right. Well, we know what the shepherd, but, but the shepherd doesn't climb over uh, into the sheepfold. He walks straight through where? The door. All right. So let's keep that in mind. The shepherd. All right. Continue reading. Let's hear more about this. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Uh -huh. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. There we go. Now let's, let's dig, dig into a little bit. All right. Huh? Sister Joan, you had a thought? Oh. Go right ahead. No, we're going to hear what you, we'll hear what you, what you. I was just, I was just thinking about my dog. <laughs> you know, he said the sheep know his voice. And even though my dog can't talk or speak, but when I call him, he knows my voice. He'll, he'll come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Anybody else understand? That's true, right? My mother was a dog lover as a kid growing up. She always had dogs. And sometimes we thought she loved the dogs more than she loved us. <laughs> I was just saying that when my sister, she would get mad. But uh, she loved it. That is true. Your dogs definitely do know your voice in a specific way. Yes, it's Kurt. You know, that's almost like your children. Okay. Uh, your children, when you call them, they're going to come. But if it's a stranger, they usually are cry or want to go another way. So your children almost act like the sheep. Yeah, yeah, that's 
true. There's true. Thank you. That is true. There's a, there's a sense, of course, young, we're talking about young children, babies, infants as well. They recognize the voice of their mother and their parents if there's been enough time with them in a very real way. All right. So let's look here now in verse uh, three. We have the introduction, verse two, rather, the introduction of the shepherd of the sheep. And with respect to the shepherd of the sheep, now the next verse or two, we have a description of his behavior and a description of the sheep uh, for which he is the shepherd of. Look at it, he says, to him the porter what? Openeth and the sheep hear his voice. We talked about the sheep, the sheep fold earlier, this idea of this enclosure that's a pen, we might call it a pen or whatever, but the, there's a person that we call it a porter who was his responsibility to watch. Uh, and the, 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 the sheep fold here, from what we understand historically in terms of how the customs of that time, uh, the, the, there were many shepherds, right? There were more than one shepherd in the land. There are various shepherds, there's, there's groups of them. Or, and so uh, they would sometimes come in in the evening, uh, at night rather, and put all their sheep in this enclosure. But he wouldn't be the only shepherd, there would be other shepherds, they would bring their sheep. And so who you know how many, uh, uh, sheep is not a word, is it? <laughs> <laughs> They bring their sheep in. And so more than one shepherd would bring in their sheep and put it in the enclosure. So you might have two, three, four, five. And how many various uh, uh, sheep uh, shepherds who would bring in their various flocks and put them in together? So all these uh, sheep are in there and they're, they're, they're intermingled. You with me so far? And wait a minute. And when they're all there, there is someone who referenced in scripture as the porter, but it's like a security guard. It's a, however you might describe, but it's a person that that is absolutely responsible for watching over the sheep while they're in the enclosure. Uh, and typically they would do it overnight. And so he says to this person, they call the porter to him, that is to the shepherd, the porter openeth and the sheep, what hear his one voice. And we're getting to what uh, Sister Joan was talking about. The very sheep hear the voice of who? The shepherd, all right? And he does what? And he calleth his own sheep by what? Name and does what? Leadeth them out. Here is a historical fact here that the shepherd did not just say y'all. That the shepherd, just like a parent knows the name and the individual characteristics, the personality, the, the values, the, and the highs, lows, all those they may know about their child, a shepherd has a similar kind of relationship that if he has 100 sheep or 50 sheep or 25 sheep or whatever, the might, whatever it might be, that the shepherd knows each sheep how individually. And they each individually, believe it or not, have a they have a name, right? They have a name, just as we have a name. The very sheep have a name, right? And he says what? And when he putteth forth his own sheep, oh, back to verse 3, the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and doth what? And leads them out. And so we're talking about now uh, the fulfillment of a relationship between the sheep and the shepherd, all right? They know him, and he knows them, all right? Verse 4 says this, uh, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth what? Before them, he's doing what? He's leading them. He's leading them, and the sheep follow him, for they what? They know his voice. In verse 5, then, And the stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers and so this is the truth that we have just been talking about to some extent here the shepherd knows the sheep and the sheep know what the shepherd and they know him and they know his voice the thing that i heard about sheep as well is that they don't have really great great vision there are certain animals that can have very really keen uh, vision but apparently sheep are not one of them they don't have good vision but they do have good ears they do have good ears. Uh, they do have good ears. They can, they can, they can hear uh, very well. Now, let's, let's, let's drill down to what, what, this, what this really means. We recognize that Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, talking to others there, but he's talking to the Pharisees, and he's talking now about this shepherd. The sheep know him, he knows them, they follow him, he knows them by name, they know his voice. Who is he talking about there? Is he just talking about the reality of, you know, the real shepherd? There's a natural side, is that all he's talking about? What, what, do, you, what do you think he's saying there? 
Sister Teresa, uh, uh, Sister Teresa, do you have a mic? Go, go lift your, oh, use the microphone. Yeah, so people online can hear you, can hear your, hear, can hear your wisdom. Go ahead, is it on? I, God. Yeah. He's talking about God. Okay, very good. Anybody, all right, good. Anybody else? Anybody else here? Anybody else? Sister Lakeisha, go ahead. Um, I, like you say, he was talking to the Pharisees, but he's trying to show them that's why you don't know me and that's why you doubt who I am because oh. you're not one of uh, my sheep. Not one of my sheep. Yeah, yeah, that gets us to a powerful truth. Anybody else? So, John, was you going to say something? Um, and he, and this is, this is, that is very, very much, I think, the case here. All of this story with respect to chapter 9 and the blind man who came to Jesus, uh, who Jesus healed rather, and who accepted the Lord Jesus, who was willing to become a disciple and a worshiper, all that. Jesus is recognizing here that that man who heard his voice and followed him, uh, that that man is what? A sheep that knows the voice of his shepherd. And who, of course, is the shepherd here we're talking about? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He said, the Lord, there are those who are going to hear his voice. Let me ask you, let's, let's go on further. Let me, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But the idea of hearing the voice of the Lord, how important that is in a spiritual sense. Lord, let us as your sheep know your voice and your voice alone. That there is a power and a strength that comes when we have an assurance. I've heard the Lord's voice in my life. I've heard what he said to me individually. Listen to this. I've said this at different times. One of the things that uh, one of my really last conversations I had with Bishop Johnson, he said, Pastor Harshley, God is still speaking to his people. What, what am I saying here? That, that the Lord has his word, of course, his written word, and we need to know that. We need to know that, of course. Yet in our relationship with the Lord, there are also times when God will speak to us as his children in an individual way. That the Lord will let you know that's, that's not a relationship for you to pursue. Now, this is what I want you to do. You don't need to make that move. You don't need to say this. In other words, the Lord will speak to his people if we are his shepherd, if we are his sheep. If, we, if he is our shepherd and we are his sheep, then we will hear and know his voice. And knowing his voice, we will do what? Follow him. Come on, bless the Lord. Say, Lord, help me to know your voice. Lord, help me to know your voice. Lord, help me to know your voice so that I can follow you. I don't want to be deceived uh, because, as uh, Jesus made it clear here, there, everybody that says they're a shepherd is not a shepherd. There are some thieves and some robbers who have a side motive. Yes, that they come with an agenda, and the agenda is not in your favor. The Lord's going to talk about it later here. We're going to see what that agenda is, but it's not in our favor. Lord, help us that we don't get sidetracked and not dazzled by something uh, that's not of you. God, we want to know the truth and follow it. Come on, give the Lord a real good praise. Say, the shepherd. And so we have here uh, in this sort of, sort of, sort of mini parable, uh, the Lord speaking. I mean, speaking of himself as the shepherd. But he doesn't leave it there. He goes on further here. So John 10 and uh, John 10, our lesson this morning is uh, the good shepherd. Let's pick it up and go further. Uh, verse 6, go ahead. Uh -huh. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Yeah, right. He speak to them, and he, who was he speaking to that didn't understand? The Pharisees. They didn't understand, of course. What can we say? Blind. Uh, and, of, of course, they were not his sheep. Now, he goes on further. There's a, a progression uh, in what the Lord is doing here in his teaching. It's really, really beautiful. So he's indicated that he's what? The shepherd, right? Okay, now let's go on further and see what Jesus says uh, about himself. I'm telling you the answer, but go ahead. Verse uh, 7, go right ahead. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All right, so when we say verily, verily, what does that mean? That means wake up and pay attention. That means wake up and pay attention. He says, I want you to hear what I'm saying. And then we have uh, one of the seven in the book of St. John, one of, the, one of the I am statements. And he says what? I am, the, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, and uh, let's stop there. I am the door of the sheep. He's now still using uh, the, the historical uh, relationship between sheep and shepherd and all that. And uh, he's, he's using that hopefully to help people understand a spiritual truth, right? All right. Continue reading verse 8. 
Go ahead. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go. What is this idea? Have you read? We read. Sometimes we read in scripture things and we just sort of like, oh, okay. Just sort of zip, zip through it. Sometimes we have an understanding of it. And sometimes we sort of, sort of have an understanding. Sometimes we don't know what in the world is really going on. Sometimes say, somebody say amen. Sometimes that's the case. Uh, but what is, this, what is this statement here when he says in verse uh, 7, I am the the door of the sheep. Any, any, th- any thoughts? Anybody have any instance of that? Sister Mary. Sister Mary. Sister Mary. She has an answer. I can tell by the way she's smiling. <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, I believe he means that he's the entrance. So uh, we know that anytime a door is open, you can go through it. So Jesus was the entrance to the gates. All right. He's the entrance. All right. The door. Thank you, Sister Mary. That's very good. Oh, yeah, very good. Sister Mary, uh, but the bishop has got something to say here. No one can go to the Father without coming to me first. That's right, without coming to Jesus first. Amen. We've got some Bible students here. Sister uh, Joan had her mark. Right. <laughs> well, that's a shame. That's a shame, Brother Bishop. You, t- you took her comments. That's, that's, that's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, at the door. Um, and so um, let's listen to this. We'll go back to the historical sort of actual physical thing that, that has happened here. We talked about the sheepfold, remember? Um, and the sheep being enclosed in this pen or whatever fenced in area. And so at the, at the uh, closure, at the entry point, what would sometimes happen is that a shepherd would literally lay down at that entrance point and he would physically be what? The door. That, that no sheep would go in or out uh, without coming by him. No other uh, adversary or, or wolf or nothing else could come in because what he's there to protect. So he would literally be what? The door. Uh, the door. He says that he's the door. And uh, he says in this um, role as the door, he has observed some things again. Remember, he's still talking to who? He's still talking to the Pharisees. And guess what? He's still on their case. Listen, he's still on their case. He's not letting it go. Look at what he says in verse 8. What does he say what? All that ever came before me are what? Thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them all right he's making us aware of a spiritual truth that all of us need to in this even in this present day that everybody that says i'm of the lord is not of the lord and hallelujah that's that's a fact and he says you can't always in fact when matthew later he says not you can't gauge it just by what they say because pretty much anybody can say the right thing more or less but he says how will you know them by their fruit, you shall know them. It's how they live. That's how you will really know whether, they're, whether the Holy Ghost is really there. Uh, over time, you watch them. You see what fruit comes forth. Is there arrogancy? Is there pride? Is there unforgiveness? Is there love? You look at their life over the period of time, and after a while, you can say, yeah, I think they got the Holy Ghost. Or you can say, I don't think they got it. Uh, they need to go back to the altar. Uh, but he, in any way, he says, as the door... I'm there and I'm in a position to see all this happening. And what's happening before me are what? Those who are saying they're shepherds? What? Thieves and robbers. How do you think the Pharisees felt up on that one again? Uh, getting madder and madder. Getting madder and madder. Who he Jesus think he is. Uh, I'm sure that's how they felt. <laughs> all right, he let them know. And then he goes on. He doesn't bite his tongue in verse 9. He says, I am what? The door. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be what? There is very clear. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. He makes it very clear. We in John 14, I say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here he says, a similar night is, I'm the door. I'm the door. I am the way. And if you're going to be saved, guess what? You want to come by me. He makes an exclusive claim 
to salvation, that I am the door. I'm the door. Don't think you're coming in any other way. There aren't any other doors. I am the door, all right? Don't think you're going to be saved if you have not come by me. I am the door. Hallelujah. Bless the name. He says, now you can come in the door. He says, you're going to be saved. He says, go in and find out. And he says, you'll find pasture. That picks up that, that same idea that David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he provides for me. He prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. That would hit the Pharisees too. But there he says, I am a provider and I am a protector. I'm the one that actually loves you, all right? That in the, the, the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ because he's the door that lets us in, not only will you find salvation, he says, but you're going to find pasture. That is, you're going to find the green pasture. You're going to find what you need. Huh? You're going to find what's necessary for life. You're just going to find what is the good life. Well, I'm getting to what he's going to say next. Next here. I'm just getting a little happy here. So he's fine. Pasture. Hallelujah. Find all that you need. You're not going to find it in any other area, but you've got to come through Jesus. I'm going to tell somebody, if you want to have the good life, you need to come through Jesus. The devil is a liar. And he's a trickster. And he's a deceiver. And he's the father of lies. That's who he is. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm feeling like shouting on Sunday school. Y'all better, better be careful up in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, and then we have uh, in verse 10, all right? Let's read that. Go ahead, Sister Lakeisha. Read before I start shouting. Hurry up in here. <laughs> the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. I have heard the scripture before. Amen heard it over before and over again. I never missed, many of us use this, of course. Uh, he makes a juxtaposition between himself and the thief. And uh, many of time, most of the time, we read this verse, John 10 and 10, and we talk about the thief. Who are we speaking of? We talking about, talking about the devil, the, the, the old saints. I, I'm, getting, I'm getting older too, I guess, because I'm thinking, you don't have to say amen. <laughs> I, I, you, when I say that, you're supposed to be quiet. <laughs> are you actually you're supposed to disagree? That Joe said amen all loud. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost, Lord. You see what I'm going through. <laughs> but the devil is what we refer to in John 10 and 10. And I don't argue with anybody on that point. But literally who Jesus is talking about here are false teachers and false religious leaders. That's really he's talking about here. This thief that comes, of course, those false leaders are animated by the devil. He's their God. He's their father here. And what does he come to do? The thief cometh not but for to what? Steal, Steal and to kill and to destroy. Everything that he comes for is against the self-interest of the sheep. There's nothing that he comes for that's going to bless you. And that is one of the things that we know about the devil. That what he does do, it may look good on the, on the front end of it, but on the back end of it, guess what? There's tears, there's destruction, there's sorrow, there's pain, there's degradation, there's suicide. There's all kinds of things that happen on the back end of it. But guess what? The devil didn't show you that on the front end of it. Help me, Holy Ghost. And so he uses, of course, false religious leaders uh, to perpetuate that as an outcome. He says, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, to kill, and to destroy him. But what? I am come that they might have what? Life. And that they might have it what? More abundantly. That idea of pasture. That's what the shepherd does, he says. That's what the one who is the door, that's what he's about. He's about life, that the devil is about death. Help me, Holy Ghost. I, this week I was just was praying and was so, I've heard some various, various issues going on with people. But that issue of suicide and, and killing yourself, that is of the enemy. I want to tell somebody today, maybe someone is listening here, God has come to give you life. That the devil has come to bring death and destruction. God has come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. Maybe things right now are not the way you want them to be. Uh, maybe you feel in a place of hopelessness and despair, but you don't have to stay there. That God has life for you and he has purpose for you. I come against, we, in the name of Jesus, we come against that spirit of death. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, death against others and death to ourselves. But the Lord says, I have come that they might have life. And not just to have life, but to have what kind of life? abundant life that there's a fulfilling that there's a richness and a completeness and there's more than enough you know what it means to have abundance right right would you rather have a hundred dollars in your bank account or a thousand dollars in your bank account would you rather have a thousand dollars in your bank account or ten thousand dollars in your bank account all right and don't forget your ties <laughs> everybody getting all happy <laughs> Uh, abundantly. I've come to give you life and to give you an abundant life. There's a richness and a joy in life that comes when you follow me. And it's not about possessions. It's an understanding of my relationship with him and what God has promised and what he's going to do in eternity. Abundant life. Let's go and move on further. So we have Jesus here. He says, I'm the shepherd. He says, I am the door. And one of the things, this, this is actually the key uh, terminology that the Lord uses to describe himself. See, first the shepherd, right? Then the door. Now let's see what else the Lord says about himself. Verse 11. Let's see everybody read verse 11 together. This is the key verse for this morning. What does it say? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, what? Giveth his life for the sheep. Go ahead and read verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, what? See if the wolf coming, and what? Leave it the sheep, and what? Flee, and the wolf catches them, and scattereth the sheep. Verse 13, the hireling fleeth. Why? Because he is an hireling, and what? Careth not for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and what? Know my sheep, they know me. He says, now the good shepherd. Look at what he's done. At first the shepherd, and now he then talks about the door, and now he says, I'm the good shepherd. The key feature, what is the, the key feature of the good shepherd here? Let me ask this a question. What is, the, what is the key, if you had to isolate one thing about the good shepherd that makes him the good shepherd? What is it? Anybody have an idea? He gives his life for the sheep. Give his life for the sheep. I want you to think about that. Um, Sister Joan was talking earlier about her dog. Who else has got a dog? Any other dog lovers? Any cat lovers in here? Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> no, so this is this is a net here. I'm teasing you. That's true. We the cat lovers. Those those of you who love your dog and love your cat, uh, whatever other case may be. Uh, you, you, love, you love your dog, your cat, right? I, uh, I, wanna, I got some stories I can tell about that. But anyway, you love it. But let me ask you, those of you who love your dog or your cat, let me ask you this. Would you die for your dog? <laughs> huh? I'm laying down my life for Rover. Would you lay down your, your life for your cat? Missy, Sister Nett, would you lay down your life for your cat? No. No, no, none of us would. You know, like, well, his time is up. His season is over with. Lord, take him on. I'm not, <laughs> and the truth is, if we were, if, uh, you know, uh, if you were a shepherd, uh, you might not be overly uh, willing to put yourself in harm's way uh, if it's between you being leaving here and the sheep leaving here, what are you going to say? Well, Lord, you know, we got a few more left here anyway. <laughs> what, I, what I'm getting to for us uh, is, is this point that, that in the normal course of, of life and the normal course of relationship, a shepherd or a, really a human being would not give their life, what, for an animal. Now, I know Jesus is talking here in a spiritual sense of talking about human beings as the sheep. But to recognize that the idea of one that is superior giving his life for one that is inferior. That's what I'm really trying to get us to see here. That the giving of life. One of the things that is really marvelous, um, when, uh, this is not about King David today, but we know the story of King David as a young boy, as a shepherd, right? A bear came and he did what? 
He fought the bear. In fact, he took, he said he, sh- he took, the, he took the, the sheep out of the bear's mouth. And the lion came and he did the same thing. Uh, that this was, uh, even though unseen, I'm going to preach about this in one day, but even though it was unseen, it was an indication of his true heart as a what? As a shepherd. I'm going protect to my, protect, protect my sheep even if I had to put my own self at risk uh, in the process of doing this. All right. And so we have him as a shepherd. But we have in John 10 a reference to Jesus that says, I am the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. That this is not normal. It's not usual. It's not something that we can take for granted here. Uh, in the normal course of things, if the sheep, uh, sheep and the shepherd, if the, if the, if the shepherd gets, gets cold, he takes the wool right off and makes a coat for himself. If the shepherd gets overly hungry, they're going to have to have a a roast lamb. Uh, That's that's the way it would go. In in, in the normal course, the sheep would give his life for the shepherd. But Jesus turns that thing all the way around. He turns it all the way around. I'm the good shepherd and I give my life for the sheep. This is who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is who he is. I want you to, all of us today, to reflect on the fact that in our relationship, what Jesus is not really trying to get us to understand is literally about sheep and shepherd, but what he's literally trying to get us to understand is that his love for us and his relationship to us, who he is to us. He's the shepherd, he's the door, and he is the good shepherd. And in that role, he says, I come that you might have life. I've come that you would be saved. I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so this morning we give God praise. We thank the Lord for the good shepherd. Help us, Lord, help us, Lord, help us, Lord, to hear the voice. Help me, Holy Ghost, to hear the voice of the shepherd when he speaks to us. Because when he speaks to us, it's for our good. Everything he says, I may not be what I want to hear. Everything he says, I may not fully understand it. But Lord, help me be obedient to your voice. Help me to recognize your voice. Come on, let's give God one of us praise this morning. Father, we thank you for the good shepherd. Lord, today we bless you today for the truth and the power of your word. We thank you for our relationship, God, today with you. I pray, Lord, today if there's someone here that has not come into a place of a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that today they will make that choice. That today they will say yes, that they will come in repentance and faith and baptism, God, that you'll do what only you can do. We thank you today and we bless you for the good shepherd that we are in good hands. Hallelujah. Then we have life. We have life. Life, we have life and we have abundant life and we thank you for all this we ask it in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name and everybody says amen 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 God but put your hands together one more time and bless the Lord today hallelujah 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 God bless you amen 1050 1050 we have 10 minutes before we get started uh, those of you that are online I want you to continue watching if you're able to come I want you to come uh, and if you're there watching share, share it with somebody else Call your friend, your brother, your relative, whoever. Tell them to tune in today on this beautiful Palm Sunday. Amen. God has something special for them today. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, yes. Help me. Sunday school offering. Where we put the bucket at? All right. All right. If you would, Sunday school offering, don't forget that. Amen. Uh, oh, the bucket. Yeah, here's the bucket here. We'll, we'll lay it up here on the, on the counter. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Linda. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, looking forward to service this morning. Amen, amen.